All right, so our goal in this video is to determine the equation of this particular polynomial function, and we're gonna do that using only its graph, because its graph has a few key pieces of information that are gonna be very helpful for us, and that is the x-intercepts. As you can see on the graph here, I have an x-intercept located at negative two, I've got an x-intercept located at one, and I've also got an x-intercept located at three. Now at first glance, it appears that I have just a simple polynomial function with three x-intercepts. But if we look for the equation of this polynomial function in this particular form here, where I have a set of brackets for each x-intercept, we're gonna run into a little bit of trouble. And that's all because of this pesky x-intercept right here, located at one. Now we're gonna get into all that in this video, but before we determine the equation of this polynomial function, do me a favor and determine the equation of that like button down below. Now, anytime I determine the equation of a polynomial function, I like to start with this factored form, and that's because it's really easy to simply substitute the x-intercepts into the equation to determine the function. Now, we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna just replace each of these parameters with one of the x-intercepts on my graph. Doing that, just moving from left to right, I'm gonna substitute negative two in for my r parameter here, and you're gonna see that I have x minus negative two, okay? so x minus negative two, that doesn't really sit right with me. I'm gonna change that to x plus two because a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So cleaning that up a little bit, I'm gonna end up with x plus two as my first set of brackets in my polynomial function, okay? And we're gonna move right along to the next x-intercept, which happens to be located at one. So where I have an s, I'm gonna replace that with just a one. And since it's not a negative one, I don't have to make any changes to my sign here, but I do have to make a very important change because of the fact that the graph of this function appears to be sitting on the x-axis at that x-intercept. And this is a very important concept that we refer to as the multiplicity of that x-intercept. And the graph behaves in this way at this x-intercept because this is what we refer to as an order to x-intercept, meaning the graph sits on the x-axis at that x-intercept. Now, what does all this mean for the equation of our polynomial function? Well, what this means is that when I look at the binomial that corresponds to that x-intercept, that x minus one, I need to make a slight adjustment here, and that's going to be raising that binomial to the power of two. Okay, so making that slight adjustment to our binomial of x minus one is going to help us produce the graph that we end up seeing here on the right. Now, if we continue moving right along to the next x-intercept, which we know is located at three, again, I can just replace that t parameter with a three, but there's still the matter of this pesky a parameter at the beginning of my function. Now, a common mistake I see a lot of my students make is they assume that that value of a is one. They just ignore that a parameter and they just say, you know, I'm gonna assume that's a one. Now, if you do that, you are ignoring a potential stretch or compression factor in the vertical direction that is going to impact the shape of this graph. So we're not gonna assume that a is equal to one. What we're going to do is we're gonna use our understanding of functions to determine the value of that a parameter. And we're gonna do that by substituting in a point that happens to fall on the graph of our polynomial. I'm gonna pick on the y-intercept because that point is very clearly located at the coordinates of zero, negative six. Okay, so the x value is gonna be zero there and the y value is going to be negative six. Now heading over to my polynomial function, we know that f at x or the name of the function can sort of just be interchanged with a variable of y. That's just a simple notation swap. If I make that swap, I now have an x and a y in my function, and I've got that pesky a parameter. The only way I can determine the value for that a parameter is to substitute in an x and a y. And fortunately, we have an x and a y located right here at zero, negative six. So I'm gonna replace y with a negative six, and wherever you see an x, I'm gonna place the value of zero, okay? Now that is gonna produce an expression that has only one unknown, that is our parameter of a. So all we really have to do here is simplify our expression and solve for the value of a. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna keep that negative six the same. I've got my a parameter, I'm not gonna pick on that. And what I'm gonna do is just go into each of these brackets and figure out what I'm working with. I've got zero plus two, I know that that's just gonna be two. I've got zero minus one, also known as negative one, and I'm gonna raise that to my power of two, right? Remember that order two x intercept. I'm raising negative one to the power of two, negative one to the power of two is just gonna be one. So I'm gonna write a one. And I've got zero minus three, also known as negative three. All right, so I'm gonna multiply these three numbers together and that's gonna help me solve for my parameter of a. So I've got two times one, also known as two times negative three, also known as negative six. So what I'm really working with here is negative six equals, and I've got negative six times a. So I'm gonna write that, negative six times a. All right, so very simple one step algebraic equation here, dividing both sides by negative six is going to produce an a value of one. And wouldn't you believe it, the assumption that a is one here is actually true. I promise I did not plan that in advance because that really undermines my whole lesson about not assuming the value of a to be one. 
But in this case, it is one, and that's okay because sometimes that happens. So what we're gonna do now is just go back to our original equation and sub everything in that we learned. We learned that the value of a is equal to one, so I'm just gonna write a one there as my a value. And then of course, we also picked up on all of the x-intercepts of the function. So I'm gonna place those inside each set of brackets so that I have a nice, clean function that represents the graph of this polynomial function. Okay, so there we are, there's our function. And I don't like that one at the beginning because we don't need to write one when we're multiplying. So we've successfully determined the equation of the polynomial that will produce this graph. But what if we wanted to go the other way? What if we were given the equation of the function and we wanna produce the graph of the function? Well, for the answer to that, you're gonna to wanna to head over to this video right here and I will see you there.